All right, let's see how many of you spotted my deliberate error. I kept talking about I'm going to talk down the crank. Well, had I done that, that would have been a little bit of a problem. You see, at this end, you have a seal. It's a rope seal that you have to put in first. Now, I'm unfortunate in the respect that I do not have what is called the sizing tool. So what I'm going to have to do is put the piece on the end here, put the rope seal in as best I can, put the crank in, and then I'm going to tighten down uh, the, sh the uh, cap here, and probably the cap at the other end. And then rotate it a few times just to try and get that seated correctly. Once I've done that, then I will put the top piece on, and do the same procedure. Unfortunately without the sizing tool I have no choice and I can't get the sizing tool to me as quickly as I want it. In fact trying to get one over here will probably take quite a few weeks especially with this current issue that the world seems to be having with coronavirus. Let's see if we can panic some more. They're ridiculous. However this is the next thing to do is uh, take the crank out and put in the seal retainer and the seal and I'll uh, film me doing it. Alright now what we need to do here is put this seal in the groove and it's going to be way longer than it needs to be and the method I've always found works quite well <laughs> and again I, I saw it on a video the other day get a, a nice heavy hammer and just gently tap it into position not hard you don't want to dent it or put grooves in it as you can see that's way longer than it needs to be now the next thing to do is to put the crank in rest the crank in and clamp it down so here we go again with my least favorite job because <coughs> I do not want to damage anything okay all right now what I'm going to do is put the cap on here uh, and put the cap on there this shaft isn't going to bend and torque it down to the correct torque then rotate it a few times once I've done that then that should in theory and I, I have to say this is theory because I don't have the sizing tool I've got this to the correct position with it in the correct position I can then trim it off then I'll do the same with the top piece the trouble is with the top piece I can't use the weight of the crank to size it so I'm gonna to have to try and get it as best I can in to the uh, the housing we'll see how that goes uh, no point in me showing you me putting on a main bearing cap and talking it down that I'm sure you know um, but I will come back to you and show you uh, the trimming shall we say all right I have talked down this cap I have talked down this cap the seal is in place the crank isn't going anywhere I've put on the main nut here uh, for the simple reason that this with this seal and talking these down makes it difficult to turn now it's not impossible and as you can see it does move quite smoothly So that will hopefully do what is called sizing of that rope seal on that end. So my next task will be to take the caps off uh, and trim this as best I can. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet 
yes with a knife but I have to be careful I don't want to damage anything so that's probably how I would do it but I'm gonna to have to take this cap off because I can't get to it and get the blade in nice and level which is what I need to do all right uh, let me get that trimmed and we'll be back with the next piece which is the piece that goes over the top something I'd just like to draw your attention to that uh, I had mentioned in a previous video and that is this groove here um, for those of you that love what should I say correct names this is known as an Archimedes scroll when it rotates it will then throw the oil back in that direction and it will hit this little shield here and drop down back inside the engine where it belongs so just thought you might be interested in that the spiral is known as an Archimedes scroll all right in order to trim these off you need a very very sharp knife hopefully you can see this what I have here is a scalpel this is a surgical scalpel so uh, go find yourself a nurse be nice to her or him depending on your preference and ask them to bring you home a couple of scalpels I have a nurse friend and I asked them just to grab me a couple of scalpels these obviously are extremely sharp and as you can see cuts through beautifully now, it's not a two second job this and I'm just leaving it a little bit proud I'm not going right down to the main uh, the the level it's just going to be a little bit proud I mean 30 second of an inch <laughs> by the way should you get one of these scalpels be careful these fuckers are sharp <laughs> I hope you're seeing this because I can't tell also trying to be careful not to push hard up against the uh, uh, spiral there and damage it and don't forget inside these seals these modern seals there is a core that is a little tricky to cut through so just be aware of that you know, this takes a takes a bit of patience guys not something we always have when we're doing engines, I know. I think I'm almost there. Yep, just the last little bit there. Alright. last little trim bit <laughs> okay and is it just last little piece I'd like to get off there <laughs> not that it's gonna matter too much because hopefully when I do up the uh, the bolts it'll clamp up and expand and give it a bit of a seal okay so that's really just kind of like a hair there really <laughs> I'm so sorry about my sniffing guys these damn allergies never go all right so next thing is to put the piece on the top all right just a, a little FYI when fitting this piece it can end up being fitted the wrong way and that is the wrong way this cutout here has to be there on the inside reason being when the cap goes on the oil will come here and go back in 
if you have it the other way around it's going to cause you a problem so just be aware of that this cut away piece faces into the engine all right the time has come to put the pistons in now i've already done some of them but i want to show you the method i use and obviously it's entirely up to you whether you use it or not on the piston here it says front so i put a little white dot there i'll explain why in a minute also down here just to make sure although it's stamped i like to put a again another white dot and i've already put the white dot on the main bearing cap now the idea here is to get this little baby in the hole but first you realize you forgot the shelves so you come over to the bench and you grab your shells that you should have had in front of you in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So, as always, it's the simple method of just putting the shell in and sliding it round until it locks in the tab. They're real simple. And we go click. Now, lube it. <coughs> Do be generous with the lube, it doesn't cost much. And I know I'm not going to be starting this engine for quite a few months, so I want to make sure it's right. Okay, then finding my white dot, turn the piston, gently lower it in the hole. Now, this one is mark number one. This is number one. Jaguar did it that way. I believe it's something to do with the aeronautical industry. Now checking the rings, one more time, yes, yes, and also the oil ring to make sure the red and green are still visible, and I can't see them, so did they go, up oh, there they are, alright, so they're still visible, the white dot is still pointing to the front, let me just let that rest there, now I need my spring of compressor, now this particular tool is uh, on the ancient side to say the least I've used it a lot so I'm hoping it'll allow me to complete this job now what I tend to do is just push the piston up a little and then wind this down just to pinch the rings almost there And this isn't a job you can rush guys take your time because otherwise you can make a hell of a mess all right and remember keep that little dot pointed to the front okay now as i said this tool is old the ratchet is worn so consequently i kind of have to do tricks. What I'm going to try and do now is tighten that as best I can. Now you just tap this to make sure it is flush at the top of the block. Now making sure again that the dot is lined up at the front. Use the handle very gently just keep tapping making sure you keep this baby close to the surface oh I've got an oil ring there that is not quite in let it go There you go, change of tone. It went in. Had I continued to knock on that and the tone didn't change, I would have had to bring it out and start again. Okay, so that has now gone in. My white dot is still lined up with the front. What I now need to do is flip it over and put on the cap.
Okay, here we go. In here now you can see the rod is now resting on the crank you can also see that the bearing shell is in position and you see even a little trickle of uh, lube which is fine I am now going to put this cap on and then do piston number six at the front I won't bore you by doing it twice and showing you the same thing twice all right, let's get on and put this cap on and then we'll get round to bending all these tabs over. Another thing I want to mention before I wrap up on this particular video is once you've got these in and you've tightened these down, you should still have movement and by that it is this kind of movement just very slightly front and back movement if you don't have that movement you need to find out why uh, maybe you know you got the wrong size shells maybe there's something caught maybe something's bent worst case scenario so yeah you just got to have just that little bit of movement now you will also notice that at the moment I don't have the split pins in here those split pins will be going in shortly my uh, main thing to do is I have one more piston to put in and that is good old number six once that is in and I'm happy that everything's turning okay and I've got movement where I need it and I've got the end float then and only then will I bend up all of these tabs and put all the split pins in because then I'm happy that everything is as it should be at the moment it does turn nicely but we haven't finished yet. I've got one more piston to go. You never know what can happen. All right, guys. Hopefully you are finding this of interest and of use. And uh, you'll be able to do your own. Okay, all pistons are in now. All the white dots are there. And uh, she turns over. Isn't that nice? Is there something wrong with me or is it slightly erotic watching pistons go up and down terrible but I find that satisfying Ooh. all right that's enough otherwise I'm going to embarrass myself